What's going on guys? Kyle here, Jailbreak Central, and today I'm going to be doing a top iOS 7 hidden features. These are going to be all the hidden features that I've found and the ones that you guys probably don't know about, or maybe you do, but I'm sure there'll be one in here that you guys don't. So first off, we have Spotlight, and to get Spotlight, all you have to do is swipe down. Um, Apple moved it. You can no longer um, swipe to the side. It's now sliding down anywhere on one of the home screen pages and it pops down just like this, you can see there, and you can either tap or slide back up to get rid of it. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. It's just a little simple thing that they changed, a lot of people don't know about it yet because it's not, it's kind of more hidden or concealed, but in a way, that's Spotlight. Okay, now the next one is an awesome one that I've really been excited about, and this is that you can block people in messages. So if you go into settings, scroll down to the messages, and then click on that and then scroll to the bottom of that, you can actually, there's actually an option to block people. You'll see here at the bottom there it is blocked. And if you click on that little tab, you can click add new and then you can block anyone in your contacts, any phone number, anyone who's been bothering you or who you don't want to receive any calls, text messages or notifications from. I'm sure you guys remember the feature in iOS 6 that wouldn't let advertising agencies track you, and it's back again in iOS 7 this time. If you go to Settings and then scroll down to Safari, you can see there um, under Privacy and Security, there's an option that says Do Not Track, and if you turn that on, um, the default will be off. If you turn that on, it will not allow any pages, web pages, or advertising agencies to track you. Okay, this next one is about newsstand and newsstand before in iOS 6, you could not put it in a folder for whatever reason, but in iOS 7, Apple has changed that. You can now click and hold on it to make it wiggle, and then you can drag it over any other application and it will create the resulting folder, which is really useful because a lot of you guys like me don't use newsstand and you wanna get it away and out of, uh, off your home screen, and now you can. Now this next one is about automatic app updates. You can go to settings, scroll down to iTunes and App Store, and then scroll down to updates. You'll see it's under music and apps. And what this allows you to do, if you turn it on, is it'll automatically update any apps that um, the, you've installed from the App Store. So you won't get that annoying little red badge. I'll show you right now. You see the little red badges in the top right-hand corner of the apps. That happens a lot, especially on the App Store icon because a ton of apps need updating. And to fix that, all you have to do is enable that feature and it will automatically update them and get rid of that little badge. However, you do want to keep note that this will drain your battery a little bit. And if you're trying to conserve it, I definitely don't recommend turning it on. This next feature is by far one of the most useful features, so you're definitely going to want to know this one. And that one is that you can now swipe to go back to previous pages. Now before you had to go to the top left hand corner and click, um, just like there, or tap and it would bring you back to the previous page, whether you're in mail, uh, messages, whatever. But now you can just swipe. You'll see here I go to general, and instead of going to the top left, I just swipe from the left-hand side of the screen, and it takes me back to the previous page. Now, as I said before, this is pretty much universal across all the stock applications, so it's really useful and definitely saves some time um, and effort because, well, I say effort, that's kind of a joke, but it is kind of a pain to go and reach your thumb, especially if you're only using one hand, to reach your thumb all the way to the top left-hand corner of the screen, but now you can just swipe it left, and I have to say it does feel a lot more natural. You'll see I'll just go into um, mail here, click on a mail, and to get back, I just have to swipe as opposed to hitting the mailbox at the top left. So that's that, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and moving on to the next one. So this next one isn't much of a hidden feature. It's more like a little Easter egg, but it's cool nonetheless and it is that you have a live clock on your home screen. So now if you look at the clock application on your home screen, if you look closely, you can actually see the seconds ticking by. And this is a live clock. You can see it matches up with the time, the digital time up top. And uh, just another little feature, if you go into the clock application itself, you can actually tap on the analog clocks to change it back from digital to analog. So if you like to read digital better than analog, that's how you do it. Now this last one is actually about the compass. If you go into the compass application, before it was just your normal compass, of course the, uh, the it's been changed a little bit, but if you swipe to the left, you actually get a level. Now a lot of people don't know about this, and it's a, it's a really cool feature because before you had to download a third party application, but now you get this awesome level right in your stock app, and you can see that when it gets to zero, it lights up a nice green. So it's, uh, it's really useful if you're doing any construction work or anything like that. You can see the table is slightly off, but, it's awesome nonetheless, and a lot of people don't know about it. Okay guys, that is the top iOS 7 hidden features. If you guys think I missed any, or you guys know of some more, 
Um, feel free to leave those in the comments. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, leave it in the comments as well. And other than that, hope you guys have a great day, and see you guys later.